Greetings, Eric Back, a naturopath. Thanks for coming back. We're still talking about comprehensive stool analysis, and now we're going to do a video on how do we interpret a comprehensive stool test, or how do we analyze a stool test. So, the important thing about stool testing is the preparation. It's like anything in life. If the preparation is good, then the actual work is a lot easier. So make sure, if you're a naturopath watching this, or a doctor, uh, that the patients prep properly before the stool test because if they aren't prepped properly you're going to get potentially dodgy results so you can't prescribe um, a good protocol or craft a good protocol around results that are not sound that are not absolute to your mind um, excellent results so excellent results are only achieved with withholding of probiotics for 14 days and with withholding of antimicrobial supplements for at least a week uh, prescribed medications of course we don't we can't concern ourselves with those and the diet of the client, I prefer the clients to eat as they wish to eat for that week or 10 days prior to testing. Not to go on very strict exclusion diets. Not a good idea. So how do we read a stool test? Well, this is considering you've completed a comprehensive stool analysis times three samples, which I feel is the best opening test to do on any patient with any kind of chronic health problem. And we're talking autoimmune disease, we're talking irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, we're talking cancers, we're talking diabetes, we're talking heart disease. Any kind of chronic sickness, known sickness, this is a great test to do. But even if the client is sick, you know, if someone's been unwell for a long time and they can't understand why they're not well, a stool test is always a great foundation test to do. In my opinion, it's superior opening test over the OAT test, the organic acids test. It's a superior test over a hair analysis. It's a superior test over food allergy profiling. It's a superior test over neurotransmitter testing. It's probably the best uh, foundational test you can do to open a case with. So it's quite simple to read a stool test, but it's not simple to understand how to put all the information together properly and then craft a good protocol on it. And it's also not simple to know when to repeat the second test and change your tack you know, to make maybe another move. That comes with experience. But what I can tell you though, uh, it's a very simple test to perform on yourself. As I mentioned, if the prep is good uh, and you do the test and you get the results, but I would not recommend if you're very unwell to do the test and then treat yourself off the test results. You're better off seeing someone with experience. So if we look, for example, at the doctor's data test, I've got the patient's details blurred out here. But we can clearly see here, um, <clears throat> we can see this panel here, <clears throat> the bacterial panel, where basically a bit like traffic lights, we've got yet go, yes, good, caution, and stop. Okay, So obviously we want to have a ton of stuff in this column here. We don't want anything here, or preferably nothing in here at all, and hopefully minimal in here. We can see in this gentleman's case here, he's got pretty good levels of beneficial bacteria. So you've got four plus, um, you know, 4 plus, 2 plus, 4 plus, so you've got some nice numbers along there. But um, I'll call this guy Greg, but you can see in Greg's case here, um, we've actually, uh, he's grown Candida kefir and Geotrichum. So this guy was consuming, um, you know, several ounces of kefir every day, and he's in fact developed a yeast, yeast problem from kefir. And I keep telling people to be careful of kefir because it can make you sick if your digestion is not well. So Greg actually took a whole ton of antimicrobial supplements to work on bad bacteria that he had. He was in fact consuming this product here. He was using the Canzita Remove. So what this guy did is he cleaned up a whole lot of stuff that was, I'm back to front here, it was in the red column here. We did have um, Candida, which we got rid of, but now he's developed Candida Kefir because he's drunk far too much Kefir, which I'm going to get him to stop. So we can see clearly here we've got a, a bacterial panel, we've got a yeast panel, and then we've got the parasite panel. So what you want to do, ideally, is you want to first detect what bad guys are there and what quantities are there. So you could write that down. When you've got a candida culture, a live candida culture over one plus, it's not really good. It's a problem. And especially if we flip to the, to the second page, and you can see in Greg's case here, we've got many yeast, many yeast, many yeast. So each sample has got lots of dead yeast. Each sample has got blastocystis hominis in it, so a parasite. So that's not very good. 
But what strengthens this report is the fact that he's got good levels of beneficial bacteria. So that's a bonus for Greg, is he's got good levels here. He's going to be an ally. So we've got a few options here. And in this option, what we what we suggested was to treat the Candida and the Geotrichum, was to stick with Candida, remove. And we made a slight diet change with this guy because he was having a little bit too much potato and some starches. So we took those out. Uh, we made sure that there was plenty of protein and green, you know, a lot of vegetable matter in there. Uh, yeah, and we basically are working on the, you know, on the yeast that are here. They'll, they'll go pretty quick. They'll take probably about six to eight weeks. We'll get rid of those yeasts. But however, the blastocystis is a different ball game altogether, this parasite. So in Greg's case, um, you know, it will take time to work on the blasto. But I would suspect by strengthening up the beneficial bacteria even more, we're going to get quite a good outcome in this case. What else can we find? Well, we look at the digestion and absorption panel here. Now you can see the fat stain is many, and that's because this guy consumes a lot of coconut fat. That's why that one is up. Now his elastase is greater than 500. You can see the top marker here, um, back to front here, which is really good because we want to get a level of um, around about the four to 500. For someone this age, it's quite a nice level. We can see there's no muscle fibers or vegetable fibers or carbohydrates really showing in the stool. And we can see the inflammatory panel looks all quite good here. Everything seems to be in the green zone. Now you can see this marker here, secretory IgA. Back to front again. Uh, I like that around about 100 to 150. He's not bad here, but he could be a little bit better than that. This has probably come about because of the blasto. But the immune system is relatively um, okay here. It's pretty well intact in spite of um, having this amount of parasite in the body. In fact, his symptoms aren't so bad at the moment. What we got here, <clears throat> if we look here, we found something interesting. We find butyrate elevated to 5.7. So these are called short chain fatty acids, and they're produced by the fermentation, the bacterial fermentation in the colon. So these levels all look reasonably good, but if you have a close look, some of them are low, some of them are high. You know, the butyrate's 5.7. This is the one that we will commonly see a little bit imbalanced. I see that one commonly affected by parasites. I see it also bacteria uh, affecting the intestinal wall. So the intestinal wall gets quite irritated in the colon with blasto. We've seen this quite a lot. Some people get loose bowel motions or bloating or gas. This guy didn't really have much of that at all. But we can see here clearly an imbalance in the colon. So in these sort of cases, I recommend um, every now and then that the person has a colonic. They eat more glutamine in their diet. They have anti-inflammatory foods in their diet. Uh, all help to reduce and slowly bring that, that back into balance again. Most other markers here seem to be intact with this guy. Now, what doctors' data have done, being the nice people that they are, they've given us a sensitivity panel. So now we can actually see here that these agents here are going to take out this uh, yeast called geotrichum. And you can see here grapefruit seed extract is coming back as something that's going to really go to town on this, this yeast here. We can also see uva ursi, we can see caprylic acid, we can see a whole lot of stuff here. Most of these elements are in Kenzita Remove. This is one of the reasons, one of the uh, methods for me to create my products was to study uh, a lot of these stool test reports, literally 1,500 to 2,000 stool test reports I've studied over time <clears throat> and worked out the, the most appropriate antimicrobial agents that seems to work on the bulk of the stool tests. And that's one of the secrets to developing a product. When you work enough in the field, you get to work out what's going to be effective and what's not going to be effective. So as you can see, a stool test report's not that hard to interpret, but it's, it's the intelligent use of the information that's important. And to me, a stool test report's a bit like playing a game of chess. You've got an opening move to make. You must make that move. And the first move you make can make or break the game. So when we get the report back, uh, the first move we make with that client can be a very big life-changing movement, particularly if we're going to take a parasite out of the equation or work on a bacteria. So it's the intelligent use of good information uh, that gives you the required outcome that you've probably been looking for. And the cost of these tests, depending on your doctor, you can get them uh, usually around about the 400 US dollars for a comprehensive report. I've seen some doctors scalp patients and charge up to 1200 for these reports. 
uh, but yeah, you can actually get them you know, a lot cheaper than that. So that's a little bit about the CSA, the Comprehensive Stool Analysis. So uh, yeah, if you're interested, check out the other videos I've completed. Um, yeah, otherwise be, be free to ask me a question. Please um, link to this video and I'll try my best to answer the question. Thanks very much.